No Nut November has come to an end, so let's blast off to this deck here. It's five colored spirits updated with the new cards Supreme Phantom and Remorseful Cleric. The two big spirit decks at the moment right now are Bant Spirits and Blue White Spirits, because I gotta say, I think this deck here of five colored spirits is better than both Bant Spirits and Blue White Spirits. That's just a personal opinion, but at least some Magic Alliance doing very well. So when I say current metagame, I mean post Guilds of Ravnica release, where Creeping Chill is everywhere in Dredge decks and Arc Like Phoenix is everywhere in Fast Red decks, and there are a handful of reasons why this deck does so well against them. One, we have Eidolon. Everyone seems to forget that this is a spirit. It's a spirit. Needless to say, Eidolon's good against decks that play a lot of spells. So very good against Arc Like Phoenix decks, which is so big right now that a couple days ago, like 70% of the decks I was playing against had Arc Like Phoenix in it. It just it made no sense. But whatever, whatever. So there's Eidolon for that. Also, Spirit of Labyrinth. Players can't draw more than one card each turn. So against Arc Like decks, they have a lot of card draw like Faithless Looting. Spirit of Labyrinth stops that. And at the very least, it's the 3 1 for 2 mana, which is pretty good considering that we have Supreme Phantom and Drog Soul Captain to boost it. So it can easily get to like a 4 2 or 5 3. Plus, it's super satisfying when we have Aether Vial out, when we Vial in instant speed, so our opponent's trying to draw something but then we'd be like no 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 and then there's also strangle root guys for two mana it's a two one spirit with haste and most importantly it has undying so when it dies it comes back as a three two and since there are a lot of red decks floating around there's also a whole lot of lightning bolt this card is very good against lightning bolt plus the haste is really convenient when we have the lords out and we want to finish off our opponent so it's a good card on top of that there's a fun little trick with phantasmal image it works on magic online i'm pretty sure it's supposed to work in paper too kind of a weird mechanic but phantasmal image copies the guys and of course the downside with image is that if it gets targeted it just gets sacrificed so it dies a lot but because it has undying as Strangle Root guys, it will come back, but it'll come back as Phantasmal Image, so you can copy a new creature, which seems like it shouldn't work, but on Magic Online it does. And then there is also Blood Gas. It is a spirit, it's a resilient spirit. If it dies and it's in the graveyard, when we play land, it'll come back. So it's good against decks that have a lot of removal. We only have one though because it can't block. That's the only real downside. And it also gives haste for our opponent has 10 or less life. And then we have the typical cards found in the spirit deck: four Mausoleum Wanderers, four Aether Vials, four Supreme Phantoms, a new card, four spell colors, and four Drug Soul Captains. We also have three selfless spirits. We can sack it, make our creatures indestructible for the turn. Really cool card, especially when we value and to surprise our opponent. And the big question is what lands we run to support five colors. Just like in five colored humans, we have four cavernous souls, four unclaimed territories, and four ancient ziggurats. But because we have so many colored mana symbols in our deck, we gotta add some more extreme lands like Reflecting Pool. Reflecting Pool is really good most of the time. If we have unclaimed territory out, if we have cavernous souls out, or even ancient ziggurat, Reflecting Pool produces one mana of any color. But then there's the downside. If Reflecting Pools are only land, it can't produce anything. So that's the downside, even though it doesn't happen that often. And then also we have mana confluence, three of them. We pay one life, we add one mana of any color, and there's one island case opponent paths us, and one secret card. But now on a sideboard, we have two Katakis for Artifact Hate, three Remorseful Clerics for Graveyard Hate, three Thalias against sex with a lot of non-creature spells, and then we have two Core Firewalkers. Sometimes it's hard to play with the lands that we have because it doesn't work with Cavern or with Unclaimed Territory, but there are a ton of red decks out there, and we gotta be prepared. It has protection from red, and we also gain one life whenever someone plays a red spell. But the only downside is it's not a spirit. Then there is Idol on a Red Orc. It's a spirit, good against sex that play a lot of spells in one turn. Then there are two Damping Spheres, also good against sex that play a lot of spells in a turn, as well as being good against Tron. And then there's Nebelgas Herald, two of them. For three mana, it has flash. And when it or another spirit enters the battlefield, we can tap down one of our opponent's creatures. So it's good against a lot of decks that either want to attack us a lot or maybe want to block us. But then there are also some cool tricks to do with it. Like when Blood Gas comes back, if we have Nebel Gas Herald, it'll tap down a creature. Same thing with Strangle Root Geist. And Aether Vial means that we can do it on our opponent's turn, which is most gangster. And that's the deck. So let's get to the gameplay. But first, I'd be giving away free deck boxes. And all you got to do for a chance to win one is to be subscribed and comment. And I'll announce the winners from last time somewhere in this video. But without further ado, here's the gameplay. And I hope you enjoy. Opening hand, five lands. Uh, nope. And this will do. This will do indeed. Ooh. Do you want that one? on top we kind of maybe yeah i'm gonna keep it on top because if their control will need it and if they have like a goblin guide we'll need it considering how much red stuff is going around i wouldn't be surprised if they had a goblin guide anyway and look it's a red deck it really is crazy how much red's going around like we need to make like a protection from red deck with four core firewalkers main deck that'd be cool because it feels like red's taking over whatever happened to the days where you just win with a simple creature deck i don't know i don't know we're living in an age where tarmogoyf just isn't good enough who would have thought oh opponent conceded i assume because the mausoleum wanderer well that's kind of lame but whatever going into the game too i think the best plan is to get rid of the Labyrinth and put in three Thalias because the main card they could hit us with is Anger of the Gods. Three Soul Spirits will help, but Thalia can delay them a turn, possibly. So, yeah, and with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, two lands and a vial. Mausoleum Wander, yeah, it looks pretty good. So, we'll start off with a vial and then pass back. One up plays a land. Might as well go Geist. Swing for two. They go to 18, back to them. Hmm, suspicious. I have a feeling they have some bolts for this, but maybe not. Best move here is play a Phantom that hits swinging for six. Do they have a bolt? They do, but that's kind of dirty as we can do this putting them down to eight and then back to them this might be a short one and short it was so not the most exciting start but what can you do but now on to the next one opening hands all right i guess it'd be better yeah it's more and the curve on this is better so we shall keep uh, i think we bottom that play the wanderer pass back Ooh, and it's bogled interesting interesting what is the best move here guys or eidolon i think we go the aggressive route and go eidolon and then swing for two and then pass back i'm gonna play spider umber giving it 
can't reach. Okay, that could be an issue. And first strike as well. So hopefully our opponent tries to out aggro us. If they play defensively though, then we'll be in trouble. Ah, crap. All right. I guess we just got to pass back. We have spell caller, but we shall hold off for now. And I'm glad we waited because that would have been no bueno. No land, so we can go with both of these. Ooh, wait a minute. Wait. Do we have lethal? Yeah, we do have lethal. All right. Opponent blocks there. But alas, it is too late for our opponent. I was not sure we were going to get that one, but it was most good that we did. So going into game two, I'm bringing three Thalias and then dumb the blood gas and two Eidolons. And with that, let's go to game two and hopefully we won't get blown out here because Bogle's going to be kind of fast. Is this keepable? I suppose so. We'll keep. Opponent plays the Bogle, passes back. We shall go Wanderer and then we shall pass back. Opponent plays Spider Ember, it has reach. And it's a repeat of game one. Be aggressive though. Be aggressive. Yes, yes. Swing back at him for four. Opponent goes to 13. Back to them. No daybreak, but another one of those. Eight is muy grande. What be the best move here? Do they have path to exile? One card in hand? Probably not. But maybe. I think we gotta stay aggressive here. Let's swing for six. They take the six back to them. No path to... Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, okay. That will do it. So protection from creatures makes it unblockable. So we're going to game three. So we be going full aggro here. I'm gonna get rid of the spell callers to put in... Or two spell callers. To put in two more Eidolons. And uh, let's go to game three. Opening hand, one land, no vial. No me gusta. Now we have four lands in a vial. We'll, we'll keep it. Uh, bottom that. Oh, and they mold the four. There's hope. Let the special Olympics begin. I don't play the hex proof, dude. Back in our turn. Please no land. Mm, okay. I think we just got to slam down idle on. Back to our opponent. Opponent plays Spider Ember for the third time in a row, which is fine. Will they be aggressive? Will they be defensive? They be aggressive. Hmm. Interessante. Supreme Phantom. Nice. So we shall swing. Vial in the Phantom. They go to 15. Now the question is, do you want another Vial? I don't think so. We'll just pass back. Ledge Walker. That's how I know they're desperate, you know? They be in trouble. And nice. Another Phantom. <laughs> These shall be muy grande. Because they're probably going to go triple block there. Yes, no, maybe so. What do you these? And there's no way he's going to block like that. Because at some point he's going to realize, wait a minute, I can triple block here. Oh, never mind. So lose his totem armor thingy. He goes to nine, back to him. Opponent plays Spirit Mantle, but it can't block flyers. So them losing the Spider Ember was a big deal. Big deal deal indeed well they could block this too but since they can't block flyers that swing in the air they get a three back to them and there's the match so a bit lucky in game three neither of us had a great start but we had a slightly less worse start which was good enough so now on to the next one opening hand two lands two vials we can make this work now let's see what they got Ooh, that swings for two we draw a land from that and eidolon can't really use that the best move here play the second vial in case they have an eidolon and then just pass back if their goblins were fine but if they're burned that's gonna be pretty tough for us but with that fetch, they're probably burned. Opponent passes back. So we could go Drog Skull and then copy the Drog Skull to give Hex Proof. Probably the best move. Assuming they're going to fall for that, though. This could backfire. We'll see what happens. Play the Drog Skull. They're going to go for it now. Yep, Searing Blaze. So in response, give Hex Proof. But we still take the three from Searing Blaze, but at least Drog Skull is okay. Opponent bolts us down to eight. Down to five. Yikes. So it looks like the best thing here. Play everything. Mazim could protect us. We'll be at four after that. See if that's enough. Mm, they could still get this one, though. So Mausoleum. Eidolon. Then swing for eight, pass back. But they have a good shot here. If they can pull another land and hit three bolts off, then they win. But we actually might get this. Hey, we win. All right, cool, cool. Burn's always the scary one because we're not the fastest deck in the world. But that time we were fast enough. So going into game two, I'm going to put in two core firewalkers, three Thalias, and dump one Spirit of Labyrinth, one Blood Gas, three Eidolons. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, the curve's not great. We do have a vile two lands. Hood, Phantasm Image, and Draga Skull again. We'll try it. Oh, it suspends Rift Bolt. Mm, spell Caller. Okay. Vile and then pass back. But if we don't pull anything good next turn, that's when we're going to be in trouble. So we take three. Kind of plays a Goblin Guide. So at the very least, we could copy it. Supreme Phantom on top. So the question is, do we go Supreme Phantom or Phantasmal Image on the Goblin Guide? We're probably going to lose it no matter what. So I think the better move here, just the Goblin Guide. And then pass back. Opponent we'll will swing in. We shall block. Then plays a Boros Charm. We go down to 10. Where is that core Firewalker? Okay, I think the best move here, Thalia. Pass back. We could buy in a Supreme Phantom. Or if this dies right before it's about to die, we could copy it. Okay, nothing else. Put in a Supreme Phantom. Now it looks like we're in really good shape. Because we can go Drog Skull, Image, and they can't do anything because Thalia is blocking anything from being played. So we'll do precisely that. Now uh, swing for three. Mm, maybe should have swung for five, actually. Eh, whatever. Pass back. Yeah, should have swung for five. That was dumb. The Cinder must be strong with me today. But on the bright side, we have two Spell Colors in hand. We can also go Supreme Phantom or even play another Image. Go with the Image. Swing with everyone. Put up blocks. Okay. And that should do it. And that it does. Cool. It's always a good sign if we can outspeed Burn. So I was happy. 
happy. But now on to the next one. Opening hand, way too many lands, so we're gonna mull. Hmm, this isn't great, but we'll give it a shot. Land on top, nice. And is this Murpho? Probably. Play a land, pass back, and it is Murpho. Okay, so what to do? Eidolon's not gonna be that great. Not that we could even play it, but since they have Aether Vial out, Eidolon's no bueno. We could play a Phantom, or we could just play an image copying this, but we might wanna save the image for that. So I think the best move here is actually just to go Supreme Phantom, keep things simple, and then just pass back. But it puts in Miss Color. It's a pretty good card against Arc Like Phoenix, so that makes a lot of sense. Opponent swings in. I'm pretty sure they have a Lord, so no blocks. They could be just bluffing, but with four cards in hand, yeah, there is a Lord. Another miscaller. And back in our turn, we're in a bit of a bind. We could play the image copying this. Yeah, I think it's the best move. And just pass back. Hopefully, they don't have any more Lords, but they probably do. But we'll have to wait and see. Master of Waves. Well, then. Opponent swings in for one thing, a uh, block. And we kind of have to block even if we get one out here, because either way, we're going to lose. Ooh, interesting. So it takes out our image. That will die. And yeah, we're just too slow this time. Missed too many land drops. Oh, well. So on the game two. So going on to game two, I'm going to dump this and then dump this and put in those two. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand curve is very good. So we shall keep. Start with Mausoleum Wanderer and pass back. Opponent plays Vile. And back on our turn, we shall play Spirited Labyrinth. That way they can't draw a card next turn. Swing in for two. And with that, we'll pass back. <laughs> No card draw for you. Nah, nah. The gift of literacy is not strong with this one. Okay, that's a little too far. I mean, no one really knows what this card does, so can't blame them. We shall play Drog Skull. Do we swing in? No, hold back. Swing for three. They get a 15 back to them. Will our opponent swing in? No. All right. Full of Vile. So best move here. Let's go with an Aether Vile. Oh, or not. I, I think they saw the blowout coming. So game three. So going into game three, the only change I'm going to make is I'm going to dump one island because he has a bunch of island walk stuff. And with that, let's go to game three. Opening hand, a lot of land. So we do have a vial. It could work if we don't draw any more lands. So we'll try it. Run it passes back. Urg. Okay. Play the vial. Pass back. At least our opponent. Oh, there's a vial. Well, at least they have a late vial as opposed to an early vial. And we shall try to be aggressive here. Play the idol on. And then pass back. Opponent spreads them. And plays another vial. Okay. And luckily we can go Drog Skull. Hmm, they wonder if they have a Mist Collar. Let's swing in for three. No blocks. Ugh. What if they have a Mist Collar? Hmm. We'll find out. Master of the Waves. Oh, yikes. They kept a Mist color here i mean do we risk it i think we kind of have to and it turns out they didn't have any missed color spell color cool not looking too good for us let's swing in for six in the air and then pass back come on play something please no not that we'll cast something mm. Ooh, ooh, yes, yes. We might actually sneak a win here. Spell Queller. But if they have a Lord here, that would be bad. Swing with everything. Ah, uh, shoot. Either way, if they have a Lord, it's already 15, 16, 17. We'll be at one. Lord will make that lethal. If we block there, that'll be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. But then Lord will make that 18. All right, let's see if they have a Lord. Oh, dang. And there's a concede. That was close. Man, that double master the ways from them was very nice. And luckily, they didn't have a miss caller. That could have been really bad for us if they did. Man, feels like we should have lost that one. But but anyway, on to the next one. Opening hand, one land, no vial. So we're gonna mull. And a little bit iffy, but I think we can keep this. And it looks like it's goblin. So our options this turn are labyrinth or vial. I think vial is a smarter move, especially if we want to go with the Eidolon and then Phantasmal Image to make double Eidolons. So let's go with a vial and pass back. Another loyalist. Oh, it swings in. We go to 17 and back to us. Another vial. Ugh. And with the land situation, we would have to go Eidolon first and then cast the image to copy it. So I think the better move, play the labyrinth as a block. And Vile in the idol on now? Yeah, I'll Vile in now. Okay. Opponent plays Burning Tree Emissary, followed by Burning Tree Emissary, followed by Bushwhacker. Well, hot damn. I don't think we have a choice here. I think we just gotta let it go through. Down to five, so we're one Goblin Grenade away from dying. Hmm, Spell Queller. How do we get out of this one? It has pinned down pretty hard, so I guess we just gotta pass back. Well, I mean, argh. we'll have first strike. Yeah, I think they got us. Bushwhacker. So we'll go Spell Queller. But opponent does not swing in. Interesting. Most interesting and Indeed. So I guess we'll play the safe route and keep the image in hand in case we want to copy the spell caller. And another idol on. What is the right move? We gotta go with something. Could sit back another turn. Or we could swing in, put him at eight, try and ship away slowly. I think we kinda have to do that. That's unfortunate. Yeah, they most likely have us. What disease? Bushwhacker in response. Image copying the queller. But if they have goblin grenade, then they win right here. So what shall our opponent do? I mean, I think they should have just attacked by now, especially considering that they'd have first strike. But no attacks. Okay. We might actually have it here. It's going to be a weird move, but we'll Violent Eidolon swing in for four. They get a two. If they play anything, the Eidolons will kill them. If they don't play anything, we win next turn. But now the problem is we're going to have to block everything. If we block like that, we go to one. Do they have Gut Shot? Maybe we should block here. It doesn't really matter which one we block here because they have Trample as well. So three of us pull over. We'll go to two. They'll be able to play something, but at least the 
bonus to prevent them from playing something before combat. So if they're going to win here, they need lightning bolt or goblin grenade. But if they had either, I think they would have cast it by now. Now let's try to finish this. All right, there is a concede. Dang, there's a couple weird moments there. Like there's that one turn we could have attacked with the Eidolon and the Labyrinth, but I wasn't sure if they had two haste cards next turn, right before the turn where we spell colored their Bushwhacker. And they probably should attack sooner because if they had first strike, we would have had the block, but maybe they just didn't know what we had in hand with the vials. I don't know, there's a lot to think about there, but our opponent might've had a shot there if they played differently. So going into the game too, I'm gonna bring in this. Hopefully we pull the Firewalkers. I'll make things a lot easier and I'll dump the Eidolons. And with that, let's go to game two. Two. Opening hand, no vial, three lands. I don't know. I think it's worth the mole. What the hell is this? No. Oh my god. No. My subscribers deserve better than this shit. So it was not a fun game two. So going to game three, since we're on the play, I'm bringing two heralds, drop out one Thalia, one Spirit of Labyrinth. And with that, let's go to game three. I don't like this. I don't like it. So we're going to mole. Okay, we can keep this. Bottom that play, the vial. And then pass back. Opponent plays that hoe. And darn, no second land. Well, at the very least, we can vial in that. When it swings for one, what? Copter, interesting. And back on our turn, I think we go with the Geist. I think we have to be aggressive here if we're gonna win this. So swing in for four. Opponent takes the four, back to them. Opponent crews the Copter. Swings for three, discarding a Copter. And then back to our turn. Another land, nice. So let's go Supreme Phantom. It hits. What heal these? Dismember, we could counter it. We can't save with Selfless Spirit though. Is it worth the sack here? I think it is. This guy is pretty valuable. So I think the best move here, sack the Wanderer. And then swing for a three, what heal these? So another dismember. Oh my god. Although they do go down to eight. So that seems like a fair deal. Okay. And with the string of root, that would put them down to six. I like how we're looking here. Oh my god. <sighs> Okay. I tried to save him in case something like this happened. So now here's the question. We could sack the Selfless Spirit to protect this dude, or we can let him die, come back as a 3-2, but this has first strike, so it probably won't even matter in the end. So I think we do save this as a blocker. Then opponent cruises this thing, keeps this as a blocker with first strike. That's fine. With these two, I think we'll be okay. One more Lord would be really nice, though. Yes. So we shall hold back, pass back, and nothing from our opponent. End of turn. Bile in the captain. What is these? Maybe like a Searing Blood or something like that? Called it. But we'll sack the Spirit. That will fizzle. We get the captain. Ooh, and that's interesting. Now the issue is we can't really tap down one of these guys because let's crew this in response. We attack here, crew that. It's a really tough call here. I think the right move, don't do anything this turn. Wait until their turn, vile this in, tapping something, then vile that in on our next turn. Yeah, I think so. This is such a weird match. Like there's not even goblins in the deck anymore. There's been more removal in this thing compared to goblins. Burning tree emissary. What the hell? That's so annoying. So they can crew that to get a three, five, flying lifelink. I'm not going to combat. Do we tap anything now? I think we wait. I think X was chump block here. And then watch this. This will be most gangster. Harold tapping that. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. So now when this thing comes back, ba-doom. That's gotta be the best save ever. I didn't even think about that until the last minute. There's the win. Pretty gangster, I would say. It was a strange match, but like in an interesting way, you know? Made us think outside the box. I like that. But now on to the next one. Opening hand, two lands and a vial, so we shall keep. Start with the vial and then pass back. And it looks like Tron. And unfortunately, we got nothing to play here. So we'll just pass back. They're probably gonna get this one, but I kind of hope that they do because we haven't lost any of the matches that we played. And it's kind of lame if we just win every time. So please just, just blow us out. End it swiftly. Oblivion stone. Okay. End response. They'll call that shit. Then we'll keep an image ready in case they try anything else like that. So back on our turn. Pull a coast. We'll play a captain. Swing for three. Let's see what they got. They could just hit Tron here or not. Oblivion stone. Cool. So we'll spell quell that shit. Wait, what is this? I'm just members that. Okay. All right. And another spell queller. This is how this game's going to go. I want to lose here because if we just win every match, then there's no excitement. Agent stirrings. I guess we spell call that. But here's the thing. I play so much magic online. I just know how the meta is that particular week. So going into five colored spirit, I knew we'd probably have good matchups against the decks we played. Otherwise, I just wouldn't have made the deck in the first place. Anyway, let's spill cold that. <laughs> God, no, don't concede. So going on the game two, let's dump the Eidolons, one spirit of labyrinth, and put in two damping spheres and three thalias. And with that, let's go to game two and fingers crossed they finally beat us. Opening hand, probably shouldn't keep this mole. Oh, no lands. There's hope for opponent. Look at that. Look at that. Lots of that. So our opponent could not have hoped for a better hand from us. And I'm pretty sure they'll get us. Hit their second land. Sylvan Scrying. Okay, I can get the third land. Full of Vile doesn't help us. Uh, I guess go with the Geist. Oblivion Stone. Chromatic Star. So best move here. We'll go with the image. Copying the Geist. So when this fires, they'll both come back. Swing for four. And then back to our opponent. Ballista. That's very good against us. So it looks like they have us here. If we play the image, they'll ping us. So they're going to get this one. Like for sure, we can't win this. So I'm just going to concede here. Okay, no change to cyborg. This is it. Do we keep this? A damping spirit. Here, but we have two lands that can't do anything until we hit a third land. I don't think we could keep it. Mole. And we'll keep this. I mean, we could have kept the other hand, but oh well. 
So I think our opponent might get this one. They should get this one. Like they have to have a really bad hand to not get this one. So hand's not great. Like two vials against a deck that can destroy vials pretty easily. I don't know. We'll see. But since I assume this is the last match, now's the time to go over the data and see how this deck performed. As you can probably tell, the deck did really well. Let me just make sure we don't mess up here. Swing in for two, then vial this in. Dismember. Okay. But anyway, let's look at the data. So including practice matches, this is the 11th match. Yes, it's the 11th match. Okay. And out of the 10 previous matches, two of those were losses. Those two losses came right before I started recording. One of those losses was the scape shift. Wait, hang on a second here. Oblivion Stone. Uh so I'll call that another building stone. Okay. Hang on. I'm just like losing my grip here. I got, got my notes in one hand and wait, okay. Yeah. Okay. So one of those losses was escape shift. I went 0-2 with it. Both those games, I had spell caller in hand, but I didn't think they can get the escape shift off that turn, but they did. That happened both games. And the other loss was the hardened scales. And that was a rough loss. I mean, the hardened scales deck made our deck look really slow. Like they had ink moth both games with the Arcbound Ravenger. It was tough. But then it was just a bunch of wins after that. Some of those wins were really obvious, like KCI. If we have Eidolon, Spirited Labyrinth, KCI just ain't going to win. Another one was against Amulet Titan. That one was 2-0. They were just too slow. And and then another practice match win was against humans. That one was super close. I wish I'd recorded that one. But when the field got gummed up in all three games, it came down to who had the most flyers. They had Mantis Rider, but we just had more flyers and we were able to get over the creatures. I mean, that was basically the human match in a nutshell. There was a cool moment where they used Reflector Mage on our creature, but then I had a Phantasmal Image, and then I copied their Reflector Mage bouncing their champion of the parish, and up the match was over. So they finally got us after a long win streak. So all in all, we had eight wins, three losses. The win percentage was 73%. It's pretty good. It just has a lot of answers to the metagame at the moment. There's a lot of low casting spells that have cards draw so Eidolon's good against that Spirit of Labyrinth is good against that Strangle Root Geist is also very good given that I could survive removal and board wipe and there are a lot of versions of spirits out there at the moment but I think this one might be my favorite just for now whenever I try Bant spirits it just never works blue white spirits I like a lot but it doesn't really have a lot of spice to it you know it's like it's a very straightforward aggro deck throws in a couple tricks but I feel like with this deck you know it throws on Eidolon it's just like what are you gonna do about it you know what I mean it has like some sass to it but that's the deck don't forget to subscribe and comment to get a deck box here are the three deck box winners for this video and that is all for now and as always I hope you have a great great day.